Hi there, thank you for joining me for another Dear Sam Horse Help series. Today I thought I would get a little bit more personal and I am actually sitting in my truck. I've just returned. I was out with a client for the last three and a half hours um, helping her with a horse who had projectile diarrhea and it occurred to me as I was driving back that Many times horse owners uh, feel incredibly isolated and that, you know, they feel that what they're experiencing, they're all alone. And as I, years and years ago, decided to become a horse professional, I have to admit that had I, I had no idea the amount of things I would encounter in the way in which I encounter them. Um, you know, the, the phone is basically never off. And even though I'm not taking, we would say, professional calls, um, when someone calls you on Christmas Day and it's an emergency with their horse and they have limited access to help and they've been dealing with a rehabilitation for a long time and you know the horse, do you not pick up the phone? Uh, you know, when it's late at night and, you know, people are getting all kinds of mixed advice for a horse that's stuck in a stall and they don't know how to get them out from being cast, which is when they're stuck in a position and can't get their feet underneath them to stand back up again. Um, you know, when you get the call that a fearful horse went through the horse trailer window and is now stuck with half of its body outside the trailer and half of its body inside the trailer. Uh, you know, what is the insight and experience that you, you share in those scenarios? There are so many things that come up on a regular basis that I help people with that most people honestly wouldn't even want to know happen with horses, but it does. And for a lot of people in many places in the world, um, they're quite isolated. Sometimes the vets, you know, may just be far away in distance and only have, you know, so many people they can get to in a day. Uh, sometimes there's lacking in quality as far as <laughs> what people you have that are equine professionals as far as helping in, in unexpected situations. But something that, you know, I realized a long time ago in my goal of helping the horse was to help the human. And I really think there is such a massive disconnect between all of these professional equine services, whether it's, you know, the saddle fitter, the farrier, the uh, dentist, the trainer, the, you know, all these different things. You have all these people who have these like specific jobs that they're supposed to do, but there is such a disconnect for, for the customer, for the client and for the horse um, in the information that people are getting. And it's really, really hard because I know a lot of people struggle with this when you have someone who's giving you good intentioned advice based on their area of expertise, but they have a limited perspective. And unfortunately, many um, people are under the impression that because someone is considered a professional, therefore, you know, the advice they give, that is the advice you take. And unfortunately, with horses, you know, a lot of this really isn't cut and dry. A lot of this really isn't black and white when a horse is you know, feeling unwell um, or showing that it has physical issues or showing mental and emotional trauma and what's going on. And there's no clean cut answers. And I remember I rode for, for years and years, I was discussing this today with someone in a session that no one ever acknowledged how the horse was feeling. The only time we ever addressed how the horse was feeling was to assess if it was lame or not, but we never considered the horse's mental or emotional state. And I think, you know, what makes me happy on one hand is there's a big shift that's beginning to happen with people who are involved with horses, where they're starting to uh, address and realize the horse is communicating all the time. They may not understand why, what the horse is communicating, but there's at least an acknowledgement that something is happening um, and that we need to address it or we need to recognize that the horse only has so many ways to convey what's going on. And, you know, unfortunately, in my particular line of work, being someone who's kind of often the last stop, I get the panic calls where, you know, these really troubled, potentially dangerous horses also tend to have a lot of physical issues because of years of mental and emotional trauma that's gone on and hard physical wear and tear as training tactics people use to try and get the horse to comply. And, you know, there's consequences for everything. And so, 
I see a lot of these horses that we might call, if they were people, survivors of all of these different scenarios, and then their bodies reach a point of breaking down. And, you know, everyone has their own comfort of, and their moral and ethics, you know, that, that vary greatly in the spectrum um, of what they think is appropriate or okay, and how horses are handled and treated and the quality of life you know you will go to some places where people spend thousands of dollars a month on you know box stalls with six inches of shavings and you know thinking they're doing the best for their horse and someone else who keeps their horse in a pasture might look at that scenario and go that's horrible the horse is never let out and someone who enjoys the box stall for their horse might look at the pasture scenario and go that's horrible why are they out in the open you know there's so many different perspectives that come up in the horse world and i find it's often reflecting the human's personal value system. And I think sometimes, honestly, we need to put aside our own opinions and we need to learn to reconnect with believing the animal. Because so many horses that I see that wind up in these traumatic or unwanted or painful um, or destructive situations, you know, they did the best they could and they were ignored by the human or they were maybe unintentionally bullied and continued to push forward, um, whether it was in riding scenarios or training practices or, you know, whatever was being asked of them physically. And at some point they break down and, you know, it's a balance because it's really hard in my position. I want to educate people. I want to motivate people. I want people to realize like every day is an opportunity for change with your horse. And yet at the same time, I kind of feel like honestly in our society, until you really scare someone, until someone really sees a traumatic or a bad event with a horse, they never really think it's going to happen to them. They never really think there's potential of, of, you know, things going that wrong or going that wrong that quickly. And again, I would never wish these horrible situations upon horse owners and equine enthusiasts, but I think there's this complete removed, you know, aspect that we don't really talk about that like we as humans need to be accountable in all aspects of our horses' lives and we need to be accountable. And even if we're doing the best we can, there's always learning opportunities. And this kind of ties in because recently I've had some of the younger generations contact me and asking like, where do I go for horse experience? I want to be a horse trainer. I want to do this. And, and that's awesome. And that's great. And I want to encourage that. But I also want to, to offer people a very realistic perspective that if you go to just a school or a program that tells you this is how you can be a horse trainer, you are missing 99.9% of the education you need to have. And I find many professionals are relevant of if it's in the equine training, you know, profession or, or many of the other equine related professions, they don't really have enough hands-on experience. They haven't seen enough horses and yet they're accredited. They've done the, the schooling aspect, but they haven't seen and handled hundreds or thousands of horses. They don't understand horse behavior. They don't um, understand how to sort of play detective in looking at clues to from, you know, what the, the owner is experiencing with their horse or maybe the history or maybe, you know, whatever to try and put together the pieces of why uh, unexpected or bad or potentially dangerous or harmful situations are happening with the horse. And it's a huge disservice because unfortunately, when you're the client or the customer, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what questions to ask. You don't know the things that you might be missing. And if you're paying a professional thinking, this is the professional, I'm taking their advice, not realizing that there is a huge variation in the quality of folks involved in the equine industry as far as what you get um, in their knowledge, in their experience, in their open-mindedness, in their perspective. And that for a lot of us, you know, who've done this a long time, you're not just in my case, the trainer, you're not just, you know, addressing this one aspect, you wind up getting personal with owners and horses in the sense of learning the history, learning the personality, watching the, the growth and the struggle in addressing farrier issues, dental issues, body work issues, diet issues. I mean, there's so many things that we wind up addressing that again, as I said, when I started, you know, in this profession, I had no idea it would be part of part of what was involved, you know, and and it was a choice I made because I realized if I'm going to really help horses and I'm really going to help owners, 
I can't just have knowledge that's in such a like limited perspective. It's not just about the physical movement of the horse in a session and that's what training is. It's everything uh, that affects that horse and really it's everything that the owner understands and is aware of and is educated about that affects the quality of life for the horse. So anyways, this isn't a typical Dear Sam um, series, you know, video, but I just feel like this is a subject that needs more discussion and I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your experiences or, you know, anything like that. I think really the, the door needs to be open for people to feel safe to discuss and address and question maybe if they've had experiences that weren't quite quality and how we can start to educate other horse folks that like they need to be choosy. They need to do their research in who they're trusting and who they're going to and you know, that, that this whole horsemanship, you know, journey will often have lots of twists and turns, but like every opportunity people have, the more they can learn, observe, watch, ask questions and have professionals who are willing to share their knowledge and experience and expertise, the better the outcome will be for everybody, especially the horse. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.